different that we've been doing if we want to get something different than we've been getting. And although often we look at the challenge of change and what it brings, we often cower at the fact that I have to change and we never really look at what the benefits can be if I do change. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say amen to that. Uh, because the minute we start discussing change, everybody gets tight. Everybody gets concerned because we don't want to change what we're doing. I like my dysfunctional, crazy, off the chart, but, you know, y'all ain't gonna say amen, kind of life. I like living in my dysfunction because my dysfunction has kept me where I am. Oh, y'all ain't liking this, but I know I'm talking to you today. Uh, and my dysfunction has kept me protected from a lot of things and a lot of people. As long as I stay in my dysfunction, I don't have to open my heart to anybody else so nobody can hurt me. As long as I stay in my dysfunction, I don't have to really achieve anything because you ain't really expecting much out of a dysfunctional person. Oh, say amen. And, and so we don't want to change, but because change is inevitable, because they say the only thing constant in life is change, change is going to happen. The problem is, do you want to be on the positive side of the change or the negative side of the change? Look at your neighbor and say, which side you going to choose? Because there is a negative side to change. Sometimes things will change and leave you behind. Uh, the grave is a symbol to some people of a change that needed to be made and they didn't make it so life made it for them. Y'all y'all ain't hear me. Y'all didn't like that, did you? Uh -huh. Well, then you want to be on the positive side of change, which means I have an active role in doing what I need to do to get the benefits I want to get. Because when I look at this thing, the benefits far outweigh the challenge that I have to go through to get the change that I want. Anybody willing to go through something to get something better? Anybody willing to wait a little longer to get something better? Anybody willing to put in some work so that you can get something better? Somebody say, I'm willing to change. So in 2016, which is I'm declaring is my victorious year. I don't care what you declare in your year is this year. It can be the year of the dog for you, the year of the cat, the year of the rat, the year of the roach, the real the flea, the year of the egg. I don't care what you declare me, but this is my year of victory. This is my year of coming up. This is the year I shall pursue change for my life. This is the year I shall pursue change for better. This is the year I'm going to change so that I can move to another level and get more of what I need from God. And I'm changing for the better. And if you don't hang with me, then either you're going to have to change or you're going to have to change position. Y'all ain't here with me. You're going to have to move from this spot because I ain't dragging it along dead weight this year. I've got to move forward in God. So either you want to make the change like Michael says, or you just want to stay where you are. Well, later for that, I'm sick and tired of hanging with folk that ain't going nowhere. I'm sick and tired of flying with pigeons when I'm an eagle. Y'all got to hear me. I'm preaching up in here. Huh? I'm sick and tired of flying low when I should be flying high. A lot of the issues that I've been facing are because I'm flying too low. I'm encountering some obstacles. But this year, I'm flying up where eagles fly, where the oxygen is clear. And when I come to find out, ain't too many obstacles up where the eagles fly. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm on my way up. So, so I, I'm going to change. There must be a change in me. Paul is getting ready to make this trip to Macedonia, and he decides to let Timothy uh, accompany, this young elder accompany him. But there's only one problem. Timothy is uh, not a Jew. He is therefore not circumcised, but his mother was a Jew, and his father was Greek. And so for the Jews, this, 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 this act of being circumcised was a covenant with God. 
God. It was important. It was a sense of entitlement with God. If you go back to Genesis, you'll see that when Abraham had not had not circumcised um, his son within the eight days, which the law says, the Bible says that the angel came to kill him because he had not met the requirement of God. What God was really saying in the circumcision is simply this, that I want to remove what's unclean. Uh -huh. Can you hear what I'm saying? I want to remove what's unclean so that when I receive you, I receive the best that you have to offer. Y'all ain't hearing me. And if you continue to walk in the unclean, I cannot give you the promises from a clean God. Y'all miss that. I, I, I cannot continue to give you good stuff and pour it on bad situations. So Y'all ain't hearing me. I went to slide. I gave you grace and mercy for a while. But after a while, you're going to have to come out from under grace yeah. and mercy and just walk in obedience. Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, you're going to have to come out from where you are and change. And so, and so let me calm down. I don't know why I'm so excited. It's the new year. I'm just excited about what God is going to do. But now, even though we are under the new covenant of Jesus Christ, the area in which they were going was full of Jews. Um, the area in which they were going to be ministering is full of Jews. And they wholeheartedly supported the act of circumcision. I don't have to go into what being circumcised is. Y'all know. Amen. So we don't have to get this descriptive and all of that. You know it. If you don't know, amen, go Google it. Ask the prophet Google it. He'll Google. He'll give it to you. Amen. And so they figured out that, 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 that because we're going into this area that the people knew Timothy. They knew his father. They knew his mother. They knew he had not been circumcised. So they would consider him as unclean. Could it be that sometimes the reason we can't witness the people, we can't help other people, is because you can't minister to the same person you just got through clubbing with? Uh oh, come on now. You can't tell them how to get their life together when they know you in love with the cocoa. And you got it for the low low. Y'all ain't hearing me. Honey, you can't minister to them and tell them how to get theirs right when you pass, pass, puff, puff, pass well. How you going to tell them what they need to do and you doing the same thing? Is it possible that the reason you can't invite anybody from your job to church or even tell them you're a Christian is because you got your butt hanging out at work? Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't liking this. You acting like a skank at work. You acting like a bug at work. You cussing, fussing, lying, stealing. Come on, come on, somebody. And they don't even know you know God. Amen. All right. So now you trying to drop wisdom on them, and they looking at you like you stupid, and you saying, well, they just don't receive it. It ain't that they don't receive it. They don't receive you. Y'all ain't here. Yeah. That's because they know you. Uh-oh, y'all ain't like that, did you? They know you. They've seen you taking a drink on your lunch break. Oh, okay, all right. I'll, I'll back it up to get on. I got 19 minutes. I, I'll take a pause. I'll back it up. Maybe you ain't cussing. Maybe you ain't dressing indecently at work. Maybe you ain't fussing. Maybe you just go sit at your desk and you do your little work, eat your little cheese sandwich at lunch time, and you just the perfect employee. But you never come to work on time. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't like that. Always calling out, talking about your kids sick and your kids be at school. Y'all yeah. don't like that, huh? Not being honest in what you're doing at work. Come on, somebody. It could be just those simple little things that defeat our witness. So for Timothy, Paul said, I've got to remove anything that will discount what you have the possibility of doing when we go to minister in this place. Therefore, in order to make his witness more effective, Paul said, Timothy, you have to be circumcised. But when we look at circumcision, what does it really involve? It really involves just three basic things. It means to pull back, to cut off, and to throw away. Come on, somebody say that with me. Say, it means to pull back, uh -huh, cut off, and throw away. 
circumcision just means it is the pulling back of a foreskin, then it is the cutting off of that foreskin, and then the throwing away, the discarding of that foreskin. So spiritually, it means that we just must put away what is impure in our lives. Uh -huh. That's why not only men need to be circumcised, ladies, you need to be circumcised too. There's some stuff you need to get rid of in your life. And if we're going to accomplish anything in 2016, if we're going to live victoriously, spiritually, financially, physically, mentally, in every area of our life, then we're going to have to be circumcised. There are some things that I have got to change in my life. Look at my neighbor and say, look, neighbor, I've got to change some stuff in my life. Uh -huh. First of all, I need to pull back. There are some things as believers that we need to withdraw ourselves from. Just because it seems like a good idea does not mean that it is a God idea. Uh -huh. There has to be a difference in us so that we can make a difference in the lives of others. And that calls for us to make a difference between holy and unholy. Don't you think it's funny that the friends that know you go to church always try to get you to go to the club with them, always trying to get you to have a drink with them, always trying to get you to do the low low with them. That's because they know they're doing wrong and they want to pull you into it so that you won't witness to God. Y'all ain't like this. And you think they just trying to hang out. They're not trying to hang out, they're trying to hang you up. All right, now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, and so sometimes we got to pull back from some stuff. We got to pull back from some ideas that we had. Some ideas we're going to have to just walk back from. Just because other people are doing it does not mean that I can do it. It doesn't necessarily even have to be sinful, but the fact that God hadn't called me to do it, I don't need to be doing it. I, I, I've got to make a decision whether or not I'm going to base my life on God or the decision of man. Whether or not I want somebody's approval. Whether or not I want you to like me. Some of us adults are still in elementary school doing stuff because we want friends. Listen, I don't need your friendship. If you don't want to be my friend, fine. I'll play by myself. I grew up my only child. I know how to talk to myself, answer myself. Come on, somebody. Play cards by myself. Y'all ain't like, hear me. So if you don't want to Okay, y'all ain't this. Oh, okay, I put it this way. There's some people then that you gonna have to withdraw from. You gonna have to pull back from. Uh -huh. There's some people and some relationships we're gonna have to take a step back from. God may mean for them to be in our lives and may have meant for our path to cross, but the level that it's gone to, God didn't intend for that. We've gotten to a place where we no longer can help each other spiritually. But the Bible says this: What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. God as God has said. I will live among them, walk among them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean things, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. This is what God is saying. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. So don't think I'm acting funny this year if I don't text you back in Every time you text me, I'm just pulling back because I'm trying to focus on my year of victory. Listen, I'll give you the line that we used to get when we broke up with them. It ain't you, Erica. It's me. It, it's, it's me. It ain't you. It's, it's me. Uh, so don't think I'm not interested in social stuff. Uh, that I'm not interested in holding my hands up on Black Lives Matter just because I don't want to talk about that mess all the time or hold the protest. I'm just pulling back so that I can focus on what God really wants me to be involved in this year. This year, I'm pulling back from some things so I can fully engage in the things of God. This is my year of victory, and I'm going to be deep down in victory. So when you look for me, I'm swimming in victory. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to be involved in victory this year. And if you go in with me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Number two, uh, cutting 
off, cutting off. How much time do I have? I have 13 minutes and four seconds. No, sir, I don't have a lot of time because I need to go and take care of myself and lay down a little bit and get a little rest. Amen. Uh, then cutting off. There are some times when some things that we have in our life are just going to simply have to be cut off, especially when we see the end result or the pattern is not going down the godly path we need it to go in. And simply because it's still attached to us in some manner, it hinders us from doing the will of God. Uh, I gotta go back to people. That being, if being around you is not gonna produce something positive this year, then I'm gonna have to cut you off. Uh, if I feel worse when you leave, uh, when I'm hanging around you, then I'm gonna have to cut you off. Uh, if I feel like I've been abused when I'm around you, then I'm gonna have to cut you off. If, if I feel like I'm less than who I really am, then I'm gonna have to cut you off. If I just feel some kind of way when I'm with you, then I'm gonna have to cut you off. Somebody yell out in the hell, I'm cutting some more off. Uh, uh, there's some places I need to cut off. Uh, some places in my life that have become common to go to, but this year I'm only going to places that bring edification to my life. Uh, so you won't find me there if it's not edifying me. And I'm not just talking about the club, but I am talking about the club because if the club ain't making me come up better financially, if the club ain't making my life better, then guess what? Y'all can have the club. I won't be with Club Jesus. So you got to hear me. You can stay up and party all night. I'm going to go home and pray tonight. Y'all got to hear me. But I'm going to stop hanging in some places. I might not even hang at your house. Uh, I might have to not pull it. Come on, somebody. I might can't even hang at this job anymore because it's not edifying me. I can't hang at the mall like I used to because it's not edifying me. It's funny I can find money for the mall, but I can't find money money for my tithe. Oh, come on, somebody. Everything, if you're not paying your tithe, let me help you out. If you're not paying your tithe, everything you got on is stolen. You are committing theft. And believe this, God is going to put you in jail. Your finances is going to be locked up. You'll never be able to prosper because you won't abide by God's principles. You can say what you want, but I got proof just from last year of somebody that didn't pay their tithe or offering and their life has been locked up. And until they get it right, their life will not be Y'all ain't hearing me. So I'm cutting off some places that I, y'all don't like this. Look at somebody and say, he, he talking to you. He talking to uh -huh. I'm going to cut out some things in my life. There are some things in my life that I'm simply not dealing with this year. I, I'm not dealing with your drama. I'm not dealing with your attitude. I'm not dealing with your disrespect. I'm not dealing with you using me anymore. I'm not dealing with, oh, hello, somebody, come on. I'm not dealing with your so-so attitude. You in one day, out one day. I'm not dealing with you being my friend today and then tomorrow you not. I'm I'm not dealing with you just coming by when you need something from me. That's the only time I hear from you. I'm done dealing. I am cutting you off. Y'all ain't like hearing me. I'm cutting that stuff off. Look at the man I'm cutting it off. Well, Pastor, why are you cutting off some stuff like that? Uh, why are you doing that? It seems like you're just being uppity. You're being holier than thou, Pastor. Well, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, meaning I've seen some other folk that have cut stuff off, and they're doing a whole lot better. Let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that entangles us, and let us run this race with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So what am I saying? I'm saying I'm laying aside everything that's been weighing me down. I'm cutting it off this year. If it's been making me straight, I'm cutting it off. If you've been making me late, I'm cutting you off. If you've been making me depressed, I'm cutting you off. So don't get me wrong. I ain't so sane. I ain't so hard. I don't think I'm better than you. I just made up my mind this year that if you're not going the way I'm going, then I'm going to treat you like new power treated you when you didn't pay your bill. You get cut off. Come on, so you preach yourself. You preach yourself. Let me 
And if you're going with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lastly, I, I'm throwing away some stuff. I'm throwing uh, away. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw away some stuff. Because uh, at times in our life, uh, we have separated ourselves from some things. But we are still carrying around pieces of it. Uh, but without a doubt, we, we have pulled back from it. And we even cut them off. But we have not thrown them away. Come on, that's right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all gonna look at me like I ain't talking to you. And I told you today, I'm talking to you. I ain't even talking to the person sitting next to you today. I'm talking right to you. That some memories and some experiences, whether good, bad, or indifferent, that you still stuck in from 20 years ago. You still stuck in from last year. You still stuck in from last week. But in order for us to move forward, we've got to cut those things off. Throw them away. Throw away those old memories. Throw away those those things that have hurt us in the past. Not only that, I gotta throw away some events and habits in my life that have happened. I gotta throw away the fact that I was raped. I gotta throw away the fact that I was abused. I gotta throw away the fact that there's unforgiveness. I gotta throw away the fact that people misused me, that they treated me wrong. I need to throw that away. I gotta throw away my own failures in my life because some of us, we're our biggest hindrance. Amen. Uh, ain't nobody else doing it to us. It's us doing it to Myself. We're committing suicide to our own dreams. And I have got to get to a place right now where I have got to begin to throw away my failures. If it didn't work, I'm throwing it away and starting fresh. Because just because it didn't work this time doesn't mean it's not going to work in the future. Doesn't mean I can't come up with something new. So this year I'm cleaning out my storage house. Y'all ain't hear me. All this mess that's been hanging on to me, I'm about to act like I'm doing spring cleaning. I'm about to act like a woman that just lost 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, five or six dress sizes. And I'm about to throw out everything in my closet I can't wear. Why? Because it don't fit. So this year I'm letting go of some stuff in my life. Why? Because it don't fit anymore. I know that's what you thought I used to be, but that don't fit me anymore. I know you thought that's what I used to act, but that don't Anymore. And so I'm going to throw it away. And I'm looking at you. And what you got on look a little tight on you too. So you might need to get with me and throw away some stuff. Somebody say I'm throwing it away. <laughs> if, and if, 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 if you're going, if you're going with me, if you, if you're going with me, I'm closing now. So, so I'm looking back at, at the text. Now we got to go back to the text because all good preaching must go back. To the text. So we got to go back to the text and look a little deeper at the text here uh, because it, it is evidently clear one thing that Paul makes a decision to give Timothy the opportunity to go with him, uh, but just doesn't insist, but just insist on him making the change in his life. What am I saying? He could have told Timothy, listen, since you're not circumcised, you can't go. Uh -huh. He could have just said simply, if you ain't circumcised, you can't go. There's no questions about it. There's no if, and, and buts about it. You simply cannot go. But he doesn't. Could it be that Paul saw a special ministry in Timothy? Could it be that Paul saw something awesome in Timothy? And that the fact that he was not circumcised was the only thing blocking him from fulfilling his destiny? Could it be that Paul recognized that all Timothy they had to do is be circumcised and it would unlock some principles in his life. Could it be that all he needed to do was to go be obedient and blessings would start to flow in his life? Could it be that when Paul was looking at Timothy, he said there's only one thing holding you back from doing what God has called you to do. Because when you look at the scripture, when you look deep into it, it says that they, in the fifth verse, that they went about and all the churches were strengthened. That means that Timothy was preaching the word. That Timothy was laying before God. That Timothy was having some effect on the people. That Timothy was doing what God had called him to do. And it was being received. And everywhere that Timothy went, the people were being blessed. I don't know about you, but I want my labor not to be in vain. That whenever I go somewhere, I want people to be blessed. 
I'm done. I'm done. I'm done hanging with folk that use me because they know I'm nice. Because some folk use you because they know you're nice. Some folk ask you to do something they know you're going to do. Hello. And they using you. And we're not to be used. It's one thing if I do it because I want to bless you. Okay, I'm going to do this because I want to bless you. But then when you start to use what I'm blessing God with, and you keep coming back, you can use I was like, I'm not going to do it. I got one friend. He's like, listen, can you tell me? So and so, so and so. I said, no, we're not talking about that kind of stuff no more. He was like, you, you're not going to, uh, no. I said, we friends. So we talking about friend stuff. That's church stuff. We ain't talking about church stuff no more. I ain't got nothing else for you. Like, I don't believe it. I was like, I do. <laughs> That's right. You heard me. Oh, be quiet, Nicole. No. <laughs> huh? Because you ain't going to keep using me. And I appreciate my friendship. Hello? And you got people using you and you have laid your life on the line, your reputation on the line for them. And then when it comes to them just to do one little thing for you, they got a problem. Something wrong with that picture. That's a vulture. You find a vulture. Flying with a bolt. Hello. If I've been doing papers for you and I call you and ask you to give me 10 cents and you got a hymn hog about the 10 cents, you're a bolt. Come on. Even if I ain't got the money, if you've been treating me nice and doing something for me, even if I ain't got 10 cents, I'm going to call Violet and say, Violet, I can borrow 20 cents. Amen. 10 cents for him, 10 cents for me. Hello. I'm going to borrow the money because I'm going to make sure after all that you've done for me, I'm going to do it for you. If you're not having that happen in your relationship, you with Moses. Come on, come on. That's real. And you talking about you're going to live your life of victory. Now that you take them dead weight switches. Come on. And if you're not willing to live a life of victory with me, then I'm not, li- I'm not willing to jeopardize my victory for you. That's right. Now, if you're willing to go, if we try to live this thing together, then we'll suffer through some stuff. I'll bear your weight because then you ain't heavy. You're my brother. You're my sister. Amen. But that means we change it. We both trying to change. Hello, somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if we're both trying to change, then we can help each other get there. Yeah. Yeah, we can help each other come to the next level. But you ain't trying to change. If, if you're going to go with me and you ain't trying to change, you, try, you like where you are, then I'm going to have to let you stay where you are and I'm going to have to move. I send your postcard every now and then from being on top to where you are in the gutter. Because that's what your life is going to be. Because that's what you want it to be. Not because that's not what your life could be. Your life could be better. You just decided you want to live in the ghetto forever. I don't want to live in the ghetto of life forever. No. I'm not talking about just public housing because I know some of you yeah, I don't know public housing that help no doubt. I'm not talking about just public housing. I'm talking about ghetto of life, period. Are yeah. uh, you hear what I'm saying? Because you can live in a public housing and your house not look like public housing. Amen. I had an aunt that lived in the ghetto. When you walked in my house, you would have thought it was the cleanest house ever. It was nicely decorated, everything, coordinated, everything. She was the only one in public house. I had some other aunts that lived down there. She was the only one that didn't have no roaches. Amen. Now you know something wrong. You in public house, you ain't got no roaches. You know, roaches live, they come with the rent. They come with the lease in public house. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. When you move in, they move in. Hello. Be a family already there. We glad you came. We ain't know somebody to move in. Last time we didn't feel us that well. I hope y'all got your EBT card. The house was so clean, you didn't see no roaches, no nothing. Because even though she was in the ghetto, her mind wasn't in the ghetto. Thank you. Renew mind. And this year, if you're going to be victorious, I told you this, all these messages in this first month, if you're going to be victorious, you got to change some stuff. Some of y'all need to come to Bible study because we be talking about how we're going to change, setting myself up to be blessed for the rest of the year. I'm going to give you in this month, I'm going to give you what you need for the rest of the year to set yourself up to be blessed. That by December, you'll be walking to me and say, Pastor, thank you because I am blessed, child. I'm, I'm overflowing. Pastor, here are $1,000 because I don't want to lose this money. This is coming to me. Here's the first day of the Y'all and me got to say it. How am I going to give you something out of here? You can get the house and give her $1,000 too. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Amen.
you at all. <laughs> we eagles, we eagles. Okay, go back. I got my back. Oh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes, we do. Praise the Lord. The whole lines, I can set you up to be blessed for the rest of the year. Y'all got to come to the Bible to say you get it, though. Come to the Bible say, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Tell you the principles that you need to unlock in your life, how to set yourself up to be blessed. Stop watching everybody else come up and you trying to figure out how you're going to come up. And then you work a five or six job doing illegal stuff. You sell it to Coco. Hello. You drop it like it's hot at the club. Sign up and down poles to make it happen. You ain't gotta do that. I can show you how to be the club owners. Hello. They take a bus for the week and lay up on the right. Amen. 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 My wife said we're gonna go past the And I better not see nothing to say something in that club either. Another y'all going down, you know, loud. Bring that money back on the tie. You bring that to Sunday school, church. Are y'all hearing me? Set yourself up to be blessed. Cut the club out, because I see now some of y'all ain't going to do right. So we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do that. Some of y'all ain't going to do right. Some of y'all ain't going to do right. Some of y'all be going, can I have a job? Perhaps I used to work. No, okay, you say it now. Hey, no, we ain't gonna have a club ministry. That shut down. That shut down. It, it opened one day, had the vision one day, it closed it just that week. Because y'all lying, they right. Y'all think about employment, like, man, we can make some money. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, your mind ain't right. Jesus helped them. Uh huh. But if you go in this shit, you're gonna have to change. You have to pull back on some stuff. So that some people in your life, you just have to take a step back. It don't mean you can't be friends with them. You can't talk to them. I got plenty of people on Facebook out here in box, but we ain't hanging. We ain't gonna hang. We going down so you wanna come with us? Do it. Not gonna be able to do it. You talk on Facebook though. Not gonna be able to do it. Some people you gotta pull back from. Some things you gotta pull back from. Some stuff you've been doing that you know you gotta pull back from. It's not you. Get a set of teachers coming. It's not you. Come on, Sister Don. Come on, Sister Kim. Uh, it's not you. You know you can't do it. Mr. Savage, get up here. Get broke in. Amen. You can come on. You have to sit here and take his place up here. At the back. Your back. What? Well, come up here. I'm going to lay hands on it. It'll get you Like, you ever had somebody threaten to leave your life? You're like, I'm gonna leave. And then when you think about it, you be like, well, dog, no, you really ain't doing that for me anyway. So go ahead. You can't face up. You can help them leave. You be like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think you ought to leave. Because you ain't helping me no way. Matter of fact, you've been what's holding me up. I just realized it. Come on. So you need to just cut them off. Cut them off. You ain't gonna me, so I'm cutting it off. Cut it off. I'm out. Please. We're not going the same way. And then you insist on trying to drag me back. If you got friends in your life that know you're trying to live safe and they keep trying to entice you to do other stuff, cut them the heck off. Cut them off. Because they try. They see you trying to live safe. They don't have no remorse. And they tell you everything. Well, everybody drink at your church. For real? How you know that? You don't drink with everybody? Everybody in church is drink. I see people at the club. They be at the church on Sunday morning. That may be at the church you go to. But that ain't the church I go to. Amen. 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 Why do you start visiting clubs? Because some of y'all ain't clap. Y'all ain't say that. Y'all kind of roll your eyes at me like, this is the only dude. Huh? But we ain't going to the club. We ain't the same people that y'all saw in the club last night. Because we ain't doing that. I'm not trying to get you to do that. Hello. 
A good friend is trying to help you to walk the path that you want to walk. Hey, I believe in you. This is what you want to do? This is what you want to do? I had some friends. I grew up around people smoking weed. Bobby Derrick smoked weed like he was going out of style. I went to so many houses, knocked on the door, slid the five dollars in the slot, they slid the little bag out. We did that so many times. But when we got down there and they rolled it up. Oh, you got them seeds in there, man. Get them seeds in there, man. Get them seeds. They roll that thing up and they pass. Guess who they get passed to? Because they know how to do it. And they wouldn't let me do it. They're like, well, we ain't going to let you do it, man. No, man. Keep you living your life good. Keep going to church. Yeah, they getting all high and I'm sitting there just looking. I wasn't in hell. I was outside. I wasn't in hell. Wasn't nobody blowing me no gun. Wasn't nobody in hell. That's y'all that be up in them closed-in houses, in them closed-in rooms. Come on, don't open up the window. <laughs> that was y'all were doing. We were outside. We ain't had no cars, but we was outside. So I would sit down. I was. I wouldn't sit down when we were coming across. I sit up with him. So that ain't crazy. I've been home smelling like weed. My mama would eat your face. My mama would beat the hell out of me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I ain't even touching her. You smell like it. She would have beat me for three, four days straight. I would not be here today. Amen. Amen. And she would have got off. Black lives don't matter when you're a kid. Amen. 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 You know, black lives don't matter. Because your parents, black lives don't matter. You're behind now. Are y'all hearing me? They didn't offer it to me. I wasn't in environments where people do that. And I don't, I don't put myself in environments like that now. Well, people do that to me. And I don't do that to other people. So, you need to be in there. You don't have to change. You have to cut some folk off that's always trying to drag you down with them. You see how they live in? They depressed all the bad on time. They come to you for advice. You have to let them go. It's like, you know what? You have to cut this off because you, you're keeping me back. you holding me down. The Bible says, lay aside every way. That far. We was like, and the sin. That's so easy. He said, every way. And sin. Two things. Live inside the weight, live inside the sin. And then we got to throw that stuff away. Got to throw it away. Throw it away. Get rid of those memories. Get rid of the past. Throw your past away. It's just that, your past. This is the present. It's a gift. I like to hear what Willie Moe said. That's a gift. God gave it to you. That's why I call it the present. It's a gift. Enjoy your present. Hello? So that you can live your future like you want to live. And get that past. Throw it away. Throw it away. Are you hearing me today? You can have a victorious 2016. I'm telling you. I sense it. I feel it. And I told y'all before, with all the hell that I've been going through since December, I know. I'm so encouraged. Man. My head should be hung down. I probably should be somebody in the corner with my thumb on my prime. But I'm not. It seems like I'm more invigorated. Yeah. I am more excited. Yeah. I'm like, yes, bring it on. I feel like I'm in a heavyweight fight. I'm like, come on, man. Come on out here. Come on out here. Come on. Come on. You hit me. Yeah, you hit me hard the first time. You knocked me down. But I got back up. Come on. I'm ready to fight. Come on. I'm that little kid that get beat up and never stop fighting. He just keep getting up. And they be like, after a while, everybody get tired here. Man, when you stay down, after a while, he win. Because you, you turn your back on me. He's going to break you to the back of the head. But it took him 15 times. He got butt. He got that. I'm like that. I have a tenacity for life. Tenacity for what we're going to 